Hello YouTube, I haven't made any videos for a while because I've been busy with school, um, but today I'm just going to show you what I do for my boa setup and how I try to make it as natural for her as possible. So I keep her in this animal plastics enclosure. It's four feet long, two and a half feet wide, and one and a half feet tall. For now, this is big enough for her, but in the future it's possible and likely that I'll have to get her an even larger enclosure. She's about six feet, a little bit over six feet right now, and nearly ten pounds. Um, so... This is this enclosure is made out of PVC, which is a lot more insulated than glass, holds the temperature really well, so you don't need to use as much heat. And it's really lightweight and easy to clean, and it has a nice glass sliding front. So I have a lock here that I could insert um, when I'm not home, and that way my snake can't get out of the enclosure and people can't get in. She's curled back here right now. <laughs> It's funny, you give them a hide and they like to go behind it. So, as you can see, I put these like little stickers on either side so I could open it without getting my fingerprints on the glass. As far as substrate, I researched um, the different soil compositions and parts of the world where boas are native to, and my boa is a Colombian boa. So I replicated the environment from Barranquilla, Colombia, which is one of the major export locations for Colombian boas. So I replicated the soil composition, which is the ratio of silt to clay to sand. So I mixed that all together, as you can see. On top of that, I have sphagnum moss, uh, sheet moss. These are magnolia leaves. I have oak leaves, there's also some locust leaves in here, so give her some leaf litter, which are some twigs. I have some fake plants in here. I tried to experiment with live plants, but the lighting in here and like her size just didn't work, so I'm going to wait until I have a larger, taller enclosure for her and get some hardier, larger plants. To monitor the environment, I have this thermometer over here and this hygrometer over here to measure like that's the cold side and then as you can see there is a probe and another hygrometer there which feeds to this and that's to measure like the ambient temperature and then i also have another one to measure the hot spot so i have several heating elements on this enclosure First, I have the basking spot, which is just a piece of heat tape, and I put cardboard on one side to keep the heat um, going upwards into the enclosure. I have another heat uh, piece of heat tape there, and in the back there is a large heat pad. So they're all attached to this, the Vivarium Electronics Hobby Stat. So right now I have it set at 90 degrees, and the probe from this goes to the basking spot which is under there and as far as everything else it kind of it, it's a little bit colder on all the other spots it reaches about 84 85 degrees during the day when this is set to 90 and that's because above here um i have like the cardboard on this side but i don't have the cardboard on any of the other ones and it's attached to this night drop module, which lowers the temperature um, by 10 degrees at nighttime. As far as lighting, I have two lights in here. In the back, we have a recessed white LED that was installed when I purchased the cage. And then I also have this LED fish tank light for growing plants. And I installed that by putting a piece of wire on either side, drilling a hole on top, top of the cage. And just like hanging it. I drilled a hole for the wires to come out, and I have that attached to a timer. I have all of my stuff on timers, including the night drop module. And for humidity right now, I'm just using this pressurized mister, but I'm looking into the Mist King system, which is an automated mister, so you can just set it to spray for seconds, however many times a week at what time. Okay, so now let me get into the timing I have set on everything. Oh, I also have these 
ventilation systems. So air comes into the tank on the side. I drilled, I don't know if you can see, I drilled holes. Then I hot glued the legs on. And you can control the speed on this. Right now it's set to low, um, but you can put it at medium or high. So air comes in through here. And then this is the exhaust, so air comes out through here. Again, you can control it. Um, I got these on Amazon. And that way I can do two things. So one, it allows me to spray the enclosure more often because it decreases the humidity in the cage. And that way I can have more rainy days because otherwise I'm only spraying it once a week because it gets pretty humid in there. Um, and that allows me to spray, you know, like three times a week instead. And then the second thing is when there's not any movement of air, boas can become prone to respiratory infections. So by having this uh, vacuum of air, this prevents that because the air won't become stagnant. So currently, I don't have that set on a timer, so I'm just kind of manually doing it, but I'm going to be purchasing a timer probably sometime later today, and I plan on having it come on in 30 min minute intervals, maybe like five or six times a day. We'll see. We have to play with it a little bit. And so I have, like I said, I tracked the environment in Barranquilla, Colombia, so I have it for each month. Right now it's June, so the hot spot is 90 degrees at day, 8 degrees at night, and the ambient temperature is 84 degrees at day and 74 degrees at night. And right now the, temp the tank is a little bit cold um, because I had the fans running at high because I sprayed the enclosure, and also the it's early in the morning, so the heat pad's just turned on. So give it a couple hours and it'll be up to 84 um and then for so there's two two types of light that you need to consider for your snake there is sunshine and there's sunlight so sunlight is you know the time that the sun rises and sets currently in this part of Colombia there are 13 hours of sunlight per day so that backlight it's a lot dimmer than this front one that is my sunlight so that light is on from 13 hours a day from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. And then there's sunshine, which is the amount of sunlight that penetrates through the clouds onto the ground. And in Colombia, there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of storms. So there's right now, in, as of June, there's only about six and a half hours worth of sunshine per day. So I have that turn it turn on at 9 a.m. and it stays on until 3.30 p.m. That's this bigger light. I'm going to be replacing that with a UVB light in the future. That's what I do for my Gargola Gecko. He has a UVB come on for, uh, well she has her UVB come on for her sunshine hours. But I have not done that yet for this tank because I'm going to have to get an LED one and install it. Which takes a little bit more work than just putting it on the screen. But for now this is what I'm doing. And then I have my heat come on two hours after the sun rises. Kind of replicates, like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, it's pretty cold. And then you give it two or three hours and things start to warm up. And also how it's a little bit warmer after the sun sets. So I have the, my hotspot hours are the same time as the sunlight hours. Just a two hour delay. So it's also on 13 hours a day. And... Then as for food, I like to give her a variety of food. I research the like diet of boas in the wild. And they eat a lot of birds. Um, anywhere from like 35 to 55% of their diet is birds as adults. And juveniles eat a lot of lizards as well. And then within mammals, there's a lot of diversity. They eat opossums, they eat rats, they eat coyotes, not <laughs> coyotes, um, agoutis um, monkeys, deer, pig. So right now I'm just feeding her rats and rabbits, very small ones. She's eating medium rats and extra small rabbits. I feed her every four to like seven and a half weeks, depending on the size of the prey. If it's larger, give her more time. If it's smaller, not as long. 
As for birds, I'm feeding her chickens and quail. She likes both of them, and no, I don't find that the stool is runnier after eating a bird. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So, I'm going to be making her, like, more of a bioactive enclosure in a couple months, but I'm going to be moving, uh, so I just didn't want to start that right now. And, yeah, I think it's really important to give your snakes and all animals a good environment because it does a couple of things. One, they'll live a longer life and they'll be less likely to get sick. Uh, maybe I should just also show you what I did inside the cage. Uh, but yeah, so they'll be less likely to get sick. And also then you could observe their natural behavior. Foraging, um, day and night cycles, activity levels. It's really interesting to observe that. Like my snake is a lot more active at night. Um, since changing everything and giving her this better setup. And then, I think, um, yeah, like I said, I was just, I think that we need to raise standards for animals. I don't think keeping a snake in a tub is a good idea. Like, it's good for some situations where you need the animals to be sterile. Say you're breeding them, and you're keeping the babies, and you just need to observe each baby, and you're only keeping the babies until you sell them. All right, go ahead, keep your animal in a tub or if it's quarantine. But if this is an animal you're keeping long term for years, I think that you need to seriously consider giving it a lot of enrichment because we haven't studied them that much and we don't know what their what consciousness is like for them. And I have personally seen a lot of emotions in my snake. I'm not talking like love or hate. I'm talking like curiosity, determination, um, different needs of them, and I think if an animal has needs and wants, that we should give it to them, and I personally think my snake is more content and satisfied with her life in this enclosure than when I had kept her in more of a bare, sterile enclosure in the past. And then, so, I have this, I picked up this piece of cork bark, it's like a round, at the Hamburg Reptile Expo. She hasn't really spent too much time in it yet, I don't think she knows it's there. Um, well, she knows it's there, she, maybe she's a little bit scared. And then back there, I have a big eight-quart water bowl, um... which I change about twice a week. Um, and this is just like more cork wood. This is Mopani wood. There's cork wood. That is the Reptile Basics tub. I have some more plants. I mean, more, more wood. I've seen my boa spend a lot of time climbing. People say boas are terrestrial, but this isn't really true. They do spend a lot of time on the ground, but they also spend a lot of times in trees. There's accounts of them anywhere from three to 10 meters up in trees, hunting birds and just chilling out. My boa loves to climb at night. And then over here, we just have like a half log. I propped it up against the wall to give her more space. Uh, she doesn't really fit in it the whole way, but she seems to like it because of the snug fit. And these are just some fake plants. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.